They turned up at Miralago and raided the home of President Trump. That was an assault on every one of the 75 million people that voted for Donald Trump. I wish they'd turn up at my home because they'd have gone home in a body bag. That lovely man was Martin Hyde, a House GOB candidate from Florida. While his campaign ad was particularly de deplorable, it's become almost commonplace for Republicans to attack the FBI since the search of Mar-a-Lago. And it's not just dangerous rhetoric. A new article in The Atlantic warns that a new era of political violence is already here and that the danger is not from an organized group. No, it's but from individual Americans with deep resentments and delusions. I'm joined now by the author of that article, Tom Nichols, staff writer for The Atlantic. Tom, welcome, uh, my friend. So what, what's your biggest worry as you're looking at this uh, in this new political era of, of violence? My biggest worry, Michael, is that um, individuals and small groups will carry out acts of violence, um, not just against uh, government targets, but against their their friends and neighbors uh, in their communities, against uh, local police, state police, the FBI headquarters, as we like we saw in um, Cincinnati. Um, you know, we talk. Uh, we talk too loosely in this country about civil war as if there are going to be the, um, you know, the 54th Massachusetts uh, and the, you know, Kentucky Volunteers uh, meeting on the field of battle. It, it's it's not like that. I mean, these are um, these are acts of violence from people who are spending too much time watching television, too much time on the Internet, um, falling down rabbit holes where they become literally wrapped up in delusions and beyond reason. And then given that with uh, sometimes, you know, unfortunate life circumstances, general unhappiness with other things, they lash out and engage in violence. And, and it's, I, it's already happening. I mean, it's here. It's, it's happening now. So to get a, a, a fuller sense of what you're talking about, I want to play for you some sound from Fox News. Mike Pence was one of the few Republicans to actually take a stand and try to defend the FBI. And, and this is how that media outlet responded. Take a listen. He spent four years getting bossed around by Donald Trump like a concubine. He should fire anyone who's telling him to go to New Hampshire and run for president and give dumb speeches about the FBI when he has no idea what he's talking about. So <laughs> are there no uh, appeals for peace here? I mean, what, what is a guy like Pence supposed to do? Um, where, where is the right at this moment? Is it what Tucker's illustrating there? Well, the first thing Mike Pence should do is ignore people like Tucker Carlson, who knows exactly what he's doing, is um, infuriating people and riling them up from the safety of his studio, um, and uh, simply does this because he likes being on television. Um, but I think what's even more worrisome in terms of you know, what can Republicans do, um, I think there's this belief out there that if people just knew the truth, it would matter. And what's really concerning, and I said this in the piece that, that you mentioned earlier, a lot of Republicans already know the truth. They know that Donald Trump's broken the law. They know that the FBI isn't really the enemy. Um, they don't care. This gives their lives meaning. These calls to violence and these morality plays of, you know, good heartland Americans versus evil deep state uh, law enforcement is just an ongoing drama that makes life um, interesting. And they don't really want to hear the truth. And when they do hear it, they don't they don't care. Um, and I think that when that happens, there's nothing you can do about it except to just keep um, speaking the truth to your friends and neighbors, to keep speaking out, to run for office, to vote in large numbers. But a lot of these people are way down that rabbit hole and they're not coming back. So uh, to that point, and, and I, I guess I, my question is, is, where do they think this ends if they have this attitude and this approach? And, and it is very concerning because the White House just announced that the president would be hosting a United, Stand, United We Stand summit in September to, quote, counter the corrosive effects of hate-fueled violence on our democracy. I want to get your reaction to that, but how does that work in the context of what you've just said? People just don't care. They like the violence. They think this violence plays out how. So you have these two competing synergies right now, or, or energies yeah. right now. Yeah, I, I, 
I don't know, Michael. Um, I wish I had a better answer for how this ends. I think it's great that the president's going to do this, but I think that the audience is going to be people who pretty much already agree with him. Um, I don't really think, you know, you're going to have people, um, again, who are way down these internet and television, um, you know, through the, through the looking glass suddenly saying, oh, the president had a summit, maybe I should give him another look. Um, I, and I think, you know, where, where it ends is um, where it's going now. There will be shocking moments of I, I'm concerned that there could be shocking moments of violence that might bring some people, make them step back and say, you know, for all of my talk about, um, you know, uh, cheering on Tucker Carlson when he slags the FBI, I didn't really mean this. Um, but I also think for a lot of folks that there's almost they don't want it. They don't want there to be an end to it. Again, this gives life meaning. This this is an ongoing reality TV show, and they and they want to be in it. Uh, and I think that you know we saw it in 2016. Trump and the Republicans won everything. They captured all of right. the uh, offices, and it didn't stop. It didn't it didn't change anything. And it won't change anything in the future, unfortunately. I'm sorry I'm being so pessimistic. I'm no, no, you're, you're not being pessimistic, my friend. You're being realistic. Uh, and that's why we appreciate uh, the piece you wrote in The Atlantic. Tom Nichols, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Up next, Republicans have made impressive inroads with working class Latino voters in recent elections. But my next guests have some thoughts about just how long that's going to last. We'll be right back.